Hey my friends, welcome back to a new video. This is a message for anyone who may be finding yourself on a solar path at this phase of your life. Like you've decided to do something or you've started waking up or you've started following your dream or you've started that secret project that you had for a long time and you've initiated that and you've started to walk this what we call solar path. It's often a path where we need to go through a journey of self-discovery. To notice that there's a deeper sense that was always kind of calling us to existence and we were lost in the programs of society until at some point we couldn't ignore it anymore. But many times when people find themselves on that track building a dream, doing something that is very, very sacred and meaningful to them. They also often feel like they're being left behind because somebody is already where they want to be and it just feels like a part of you, like your ego part of you wants to compete on this world, even though it's not a competition. So. This message is for you, my friend. If you're feeling left behind, it's because you're comparing yourself with someone else who's on a different path than you. On your path, there's no one in front of you because you're the one that is making it. So you can't be left behind. You can only be left alone, which is often necessary for you so you can find your own way. Eventually, your path will intersect with someone else who shares similar interests and vision as you. So follow your, your instincts and focus on what resonates with your soul. Only that way you can discover where it is taking you. So this is a great secret that many times we forget. Firstly, it's not a competition. I know even when I've started this journey, when I've started painting and started making these videos, I found myself like a part of me was comparing with someone else. And so many people are already succeeding at what I'm doing. And I was thinking like, am I too late in this game? Am I like uh, good enough? I was questioning my worth and so on. But it's only a part of the process until we recognize it's not a competition. Like. I'm not here to compete with anyone. I'm here because something called me to do that. And um, it's really the sense of deep knowing that we need to do it for, firstly, for self-discovery, to recognize what we are capable of. And as we're discovering more of um, what we may be really capable of, um, we start also discovering other things that we want to do, other things that we like doing, other things that we feel more attracted to until at some point we know more, we know more of these things that uh, really speak to us, that really resonate with us, that are really in alignment with us and therefore we stop doing things that are not in alignment. We stop doing things that are not resonating with us, that are not speaking to us. And eventually our life changes because we start doing more of these new things that um, are really more in alignment with us and less of the things that are not so much. And eventually we recognize that a um, big change happened. Big change happened. We started to feel better about ourselves and we started to to feel more connected with life and we started to feel more enthusiastic, more infused with life, uh, more alive. We've started to feel more alive and that is a wonderful experience that can only happen if we decide to go through these trials of errors, which basically means to keep discovering what speaks to you and keep letting go of what doesn't speak to you. And of course, as we still need to function in the in the world, it's not like we're doing it all the time. We're doing it when we have time for it, when we make time for it. That's why so many people don't choose to do that, because people are distracted with so many different things. So it's really a choice, you know, going into this solar path for a certain period of time until your paths, you know, as I mentioned, intersect with paths of others who have 
similar interests, uh, similar visions, similar goals. For that certain period of time, you will walk alone. And that is one of the most important times of your life because you're really discovering who you are. Not something, you know, mystical. You're just discovering what you like to do. You've been so brainwashed and so heartwashed and so hypnotized to think certain way, to like certain things, to study certain things because other people want you to do all of that. And now you really felt a deep desire to notice what you like to do, what you love to do, what is your thing and and where all of this may take you if you really follow it and and it's like you start relearning everything you start firstly deprogramming yourself and letting go of i mean not just letting go but shattering these old stories you had about yourself you start noticing that so many words that you have really you don't you really don't know the the real meaning behind them you just know them because they sound interesting to you like spirituality and and purpose and meaning and surrendering and trust those are all just words they're nice beautiful words but we don't really know the the real meaning behind them until we go onto that journey and and we start discovering oh maybe surrendering doesn't mean to just not do anything to just live in anything and just watch what happens maybe it means to walk in alignment because every time when we do something that uh, that really aligns with our unique energy it feels like we are not really doing it it's more like something is doing it through us like for me it's painting is most definitely something like that it's one of the only activities for me where I really completely lose the sense of time. Like I can do it for three hours and it will not feel like that. And when we're doing something like that, we really lose ourselves in it. And that's when an activity becomes effortless. And that is surrendering, effortless work, effortless action. It comes from many ancient teachings but the real meaning behind that doesn't come as an intellectual understanding it comes as a personal experience and that's what this solopath is teaching you so once you come together with people that will have same you know goals and visions for life you will be able to understand these relationships from a completely different level you see from our past we have so disturbed visions and ideas about what relationships should look like how they should look like and what are really healthy relationships what are these soul-like relationships it's not something you know when people are just passionate to talk about certain subjects and that makes a good relationship it's more like where each individual brings unique values and unique aspects and unique perspective and then when you come together the picture becomes more complete and then together you create a new purpose that can you know that can only be accomplished if you combine these different forces together so the purpose of relationship is like the purpose of cells in the body single cell would never form such a complex being as your body is so they came together and each cell found its own purpose in the community of cells and therefore they've started building an organism organs right and bones and structure and nervous system and everything and as they've united in a very well con- coherent order greater intelligence could take over and started guiding its mechanism right and that's what happens when a healthy relationship emerge between human beings it happens the same way something higher starts guiding it it happens in a company that has a healthy organism established within it's like something higher is is navigating that company to create a beautiful impact on the world and each person will just know what he or she needs to do so in order for it to happen 
the founder of the company firstly needed to start that company alone. It was his or her solar path again. So he would discover what is that higher calling, right? What is that higher mechanism that is calling him or her into action? So that's the importance of this solar path so much. And of course, when you start it, there's a battle between this higher knowing and inner, you know, compass, inner intelligence and your ego, which um, is this old kind of lack of intelligence. It's more like driven by force. Ego is not like, it's not something bad or negative. It's just your undeveloped self. The word ego means self, but it's quite undeveloped. But it gives you a sense of yourself. It gives you a sense of your individuality, your personality, your identity. But of course, you've come here to evolve it, to evolve its awareness into higher awareness. Like uh, Dr. Rudolf Steiner called it the evolution into a higher ego, higher self where a person becomes driven more by heart than intellect, more, more by intuition than just knowledge and intellectual understanding. And then intuition often doesn't make sense, but it um, creates a strong magnetic force that is really attracting you towards something. And it often encourages you into growth. So often when you feel something intuitively, most people ignore it because it's scary. Like you feel you need to go into that transformative path. Well, it's scary because as I mentioned in one of my previous videos, it may be a dark forest filled with many demons and many people get scared of that and they like to stay in their caves where they feel safe. But intuition will take you into this dark forest, but it will guide you through it. So even though it will be scary and there will be many demons and you will need to face with many of them, still something within you will be guiding you through the process. And the feedback of that will be that um, the right thing will happen at the right time, which is again the mystical part of life because it's unpredictable unpredictable good things will start happening to you at the at the time when just before you want to give up so the solar path is very scary path because we really need to face with our we need to challenge our own knowing and we need to challenge our own deep fears like how far are we willing to go with this and and how much we're really ready to to trust ourselves until we let go and fall back into the comfort and of course, even comfort zone can serve us at this point because we can rejuvenate there. So it's all okay. We can recharge, you know, all the creativity and reflection and, and feedback and everything happens in the comfort zone. So it's balance. But then we go out of it again and we challenge ourselves. We challenge our knowing. We have this goal. We have vision or whatever is driving us. So we do what is necessary and we keep pushing ourselves until that process of uh, moving forward becomes like a new habit. So the habit of being stuck and, and being afraid of everything scary kind of gets left behind. And that's where the biggest possible transformation in our lives happens because suddenly we don't identify ourselves as someone who's scared and stuck and so on. Suddenly we identify ourselves as heroes of our own lives, not in any egoistical way or, or to feel more superior or whatever, but we just start to see ourselves as someone who is capable, someone, someone who can, right? You, the world has programmed you to think you can't. That's why you you should use social media and distract yourself and look what other people are doing so you would feel left behind and you would compare yourself with others and you would think that you're not smart enough and you're not wise enough and and now we have these shorts and you know these short videos that are just shortening your attention span with a great 
a great goal to really destroy your your attention span, to really stop thinking for yourself. So you would never consider to question what is your path, what is your unique path. So the remedy really is to focus, focus on your journey, focus on your instincts, focus on what is driving you, what is calling you. Keep reflecting on your goals, keep reflecting on what you want, keep focusing on what you want and, and see where it is taking you. At some point you will notice, well, some of these wants and goals and dreams are not even yours, but were programs by society, but as all these stories are shattering down, new ones will emerge that will come from your heart and they will inspire you so deeply that at some point you will forget that you, you ever were afraid to do that. And the most beautiful thing about this process is this, when you start to see small progress, you will start to believe that bigger progress will also take place. When you start to see a change in your personality, when you start to see that um, you are actually much more confident than you thought you are, when you start to see that uh, you are actually much better communicator than you thought you are when you actually meet the right people, and you are actually much more creative when you start doing something you're more passionate about, you will notice, well, maybe really most of the things that I've believed about myself were false. And that's where the biggest curiosity awakens within you. Like, what else was false? And that is so interesting because you start questioning everything in your life. And it just leads you further on that journey where at some point you will start making some kind of an impact because you're doing the extraordinary. You're doing the something that is not normal in society. You're doing something unique, something authentic, which can only emerge as a byproduct of a hero's journey, a path that is not walked by many. And at some point where you almost stop caring when you will meet the right people, when you will, you know, when the challenges will end, more breakthroughs will start happening and more people will come into your life and some people will just, you know, bring solutions. Some people will bring insights. Some people will bring incredible connections. And at some point you will notice that all that inner work you needed to do on that journey uh, started really reflecting in the outer world and you will notice that um, wherever you go, you just meet really kind and incredible people. And to me, it's one of the most interesting things that happens because when you talk with someone who hasn't been through that, will say, yeah, their people are mean and angry and sad. And then you go at the same place and you meet the most kind people. It, to me, it happens all the time. And it's always so funny. Like we all live in our own matrix, in our own reality. and and we are shaping it, we are forming it, we are writing the script of it. Sure, there's a collective mind that is still influencing us, but more we become in control of our own mind and our own story, more we start influencing the collective mind. So therefore, many other minds start changing and start to feel more inspired to change. So. To anyone who's finding yourself maybe feeling left behind or maybe feeling like you're on a solo path or like you have zero friends or whatever it is, really focus on what is unfolding and focus on your goals and learn. It's a great time to learn. Study people. Study all kinds of people that inspire you. But most importantly, study yourself, study what inspires you, why it inspires you. There is a deeper meaning in what inspires you. Like I felt often inspired by art and a few years later, like I was often inspired by heartfelt music. Like I love hip hop, I love rap. So I was listening this as a kid so frequently 
different kind of rap music. But when there are few artists who I really love and and few songs are really incredible. It's fair that uh, they've drawn some deep emotions for that song and and it just inspired me so much and I never knew why I feel such a strong energy when I'm listening to that but now I know like it's the same energy that drives me it's uh, just something that moves through you and when I'm making art I feel this energy so I always felt inspired by art just because I have a soul of an artist as well and and I needed to discover what's my way of artistic expression, like what's my way of expression of art. Cause, I mean, heart, yeah, that's what art is, right? The expression of heart. So we need to, you know, we need to really recognize what could be our expression of the heart. How could you express your heart? And that's how you become an artist. So don't limit yourself by an idea, like if you feel inspired by paintings, you should paint. Or if you feel inspired by music, you should make music. Or if you feel inspired by YouTube videos, you should make YouTube videos. Know that when something inspires you, it's not necessary that you should do something similar. It's, necess it's necessary to know that it speaks to you because you have a similar spirit. And you need to find your way how to express it. And to find your way means that you need to walk this solar path where you start walking your own path. You start digging your own path and paving it and walking it and and researching it and getting lost on it and, and rediscovering yourself and getting into roadblocks and getting into these dark forests. And sometimes falling off the cliffs and going through all kinds of crazy stuff. Only so at some point you, you become so wise that that wisdom can maybe become a part of the message or a part of the story. Like so many great musicians became great because of their deepest struggles or because of their past. So past needs to be, you know, experienced firstly in the present moment. It needs to be meaningful. It needs to be di diverse. It needs to have many different experiences, many different events. So it can turn into a story that can be helpful for others. So right now, maybe you're at the point where you're writing your own story. So be bold in it, <laughs> be bold in it. So you can be the hero of that story. So my friends, I hope you found a great value in today's message. I'm sending you lots of love, blessings and power. And I hope you've enjoyed in today's artwork to anyone who would love to support my art. I'm an artist. <laughs> All my paintings in the videos are done by me. So you can buy a print of it or original one. Everything is published on our site, attractpassion.com. So go there and check it out. If any of it speaks to you, it's most probably for you. Art always speaks to us. The right one speaks to us. So go and buy some. And to anyone who would love to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I'm also offering coaching sessions. You can book a calling in the description of this video. So check it out. And if you feel aligned with it, yeah, go ahead. So, my friends, till next time, one love. <laughs>